Good morning. Oh man, it's great to once again welcome you to the Lord's house. You know, I say that, but I realize every house I walk into, if I'm living a Christian life, should be the Lord's house. Amen. His love should shine through me wherever I'm at, work, home, even the Walmart. That's a little harder. That's where the drive through pickup is so great. You don't actually have to enter. No, it's great to welcome you to the Lord's house. It's so great to corporately worship, with, encourage one another, fellowship with one another. There's a number of service opportunities. These are randomly distributed throughout the pews or seats. If you don't have one handy, grab one. Ladies, a couple of opportunities, a night of s'mores uh, and fellowship, a night with a Chandra Pierce concert you'll want to check out. Church, there's an all-family bike ride coming up. So if you need a bike, I'll loan you mine. <laughs> Last time I was on a bike, it was not a good sight. So buy a helmet, too. That would be good. Have a helmet. But family bike ride, we're gonna, uh, they're going to meet at Shields. More details coming out on that. Tyke time is starting up. Be in prayer for that ministry as we continue to reach out to families with young kids and give those children a chance to interact and play together and things. And then something new and exciting, so give thought to this. We'd love for you to participate in the trunk or treat. You buy 280 maybe $500 worth of candy, you fill your trunk, <laughs> and you give away candy to kids. But what a way to connect with our community. That's what the, it isn't about the money, it's not about the candy. It's about connecting with families that come and bring their kids around. So, uh, I, now you can, my wife can attest to this, I buy a lot of candy anyway. A lot of times we have the youth group over and first year they came I had like two of those 20 gallon totes full of candy and my wife's like, is that enough? I said, yeah, I get the leftovers. It rained that year and the teens just filled their buckets out of my candy. I didn't have near the leftovers I'd hoped, but I'm looking forward to this year. I think it'll be an exciting time. I'm going to find some way to transform Peg's van into something really cool and loud, like music or something. So it'll be fun. So give thought to that and sign up in the foyer, because we'd like to know how many people we have from the church who'll be participating in that evening. What's that? If you don't have a trunk, just put a big old tub of candy on the ground and give it away and decorate it up. Dress up and do it. We'll make it work. Or we'll find somebody with a car. I've got five cars. I'm good. I'll bring you one. Uh, oh, no. It's great to worship the Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. The house of the Lord has a purpose, and that's what we corporately bring praise to him. Would you stand and join us through music this morning as we sing praises of the Lord?
that awesome? I love that phrase. We were here. We were lost. We were lost and we were welcomed into Christ's home. Amen? Ah, oh, such a powerful phrase. Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Why? You can finish it. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen? Ups and downs, he's right there. Lean on him. Look at him and say, Lord, yes, I will follow you in the good times, in the bad times. It's about you. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late is working all things out, is working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. trust him because he is whatever you need right he's your peace 
He's a way maker. He paves a path when we need it most. I've heard about miracles this week from people right here in this place. I've heard of people that have needed his peace, his love. I've heard of people who needed his hope. And he is that. And he's right here right now. We don't need to go looking. He's here and he just wants you to give it to him. Amen. You are here. You're moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. I worship you, I worship you, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the
hymn of praise this morning. As you may be seated, as Pastor Jay comes and the worship team can go ahead and be dismissed at this time. Aren't you thankful we serve a way maker of a God this morning? Amen. It doesn't matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. There are times when we feel like we're at the end of ourselves, right? I want you to know the God we serve will make a way. When we feel like there's no hope, when we feel like there's no purpose, God will come. If we will cry out to him, he will come and he will meet with us. He will minister to us and he will make a way. That is the God we serve. He loves us. He wants what's best for him, for us. Man, it is so good to be in God's house this morning. Amen. Amen. To be able to gather together with our brothers and sisters in Christ and worship him. So let's go to him in prayer at this time. Father God, it is so good to be able to be in your house this morning, worshiping you, crying out to you, Father God. You, you know what every burden that every person has carried in here this morning. You know what the things that are on our minds. You know the things that uh, cause us some anxiety or fear right now, Lord God. And Lord, I pray that this morning we would just lay those things at your feet. Lord, where it looks like there is no way, there is no hope, Lord God. As we just sung about, you are a God that makes a way. If we will just cry out to you, if we will just lay those things at your feet, if we will just trust and walk in obedience, Father God, you will make a way. And Lord, we know that. You are so faithful. You are so good to us. And so this morning, Father, we just want to say thank you in advance for what you're going to do and how you're going to move and how you're going to work. We thank you for what you've already done. You've been so faithful to us, so good to us, and we're so thankful for that. Lord, thank you for this day. You knew we needed a day like this to come together, to receive encouragement, to listen to your word, to be able to praise you with other believers. Lord, we really do need this. So thank you, Father, for this day that you set aside for us. And Lord, I pray that you would just receive all the praise and honor that, is, that you are due this morning. Father God, it is so good to be in your house. Thank you for the way you've just poured out your presence here already. Lord, I pray you'd be with Pastor Ben as he brings the message this morning. Just speak through him. Help us, Father, to hear from you today. Father God, I pray that you would take the offering we're about to receive and you would bless it and you'd use it to further your kingdom. Lord, help us to be obedient in that. Thank you, Father, for who you are. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for your mercy and grace and forgiveness without which we would be utterly lost. But you give us so freely. Thank you, Father, for that. We love you and we give you all the praise and honor that you are due. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, if the ushers would come forward.
Hey, good morning. Hey, we're getting better at that. I like that. All right. Usually if I say it, nobody replies. I'm like, what did I have something in my teeth or I don't know. I love hearing you guys, okay? So uh, don't be afraid to respond. I won't call you out personally unless you're Logan. I just like to do that to Logan, all right? Uh, I've already challenged him that I hope to find him sleeping. Uh, he, you know, that's my job. I, I, I told him I would put him to sleep this morning just so I can call him out. So, but no, God is good, right? Good. All the time, God is good, right? Uh, we are starting a new sermon series called Transform. Uh, and it's going to be based out of uh, Romans 12.2. All right, let's, I'm going to go ahead and read it. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. All right. So when I was a kid, I don't know about you, I loved Transformers. Right? Anybody else? All right, I got a couple of you. All right, all right. I love Transformers. I collected tons of Transformers. It, I could spend hours trying to get it to where it's supposed to be, you know, from a plane to a robot, from, um, I don't know, some dragon to a robot. Uh, after that, you get really a car to a robot, right? Those things are kind of like it right there. Uh, and I started thinking about, you know, what if I was a really lame designer of Transformers? And I decided, okay, I've got a new line for you. A building that turns into a, a robot. Like just, what do you do with a building? Right? All right. The robot part's fun, but everything else eh, is kind of lame. Uh, if you know Voltron is another, like, it's kind of, like, I'm getting out there, I know. Uh, it was all these things coming together to make one robot. And I just thought, what if I lost all the rest of the parts and I just had a knee? How do you play with a knee of toys? Yay, I bend, right? And that's it. It's kind of, it's goofy, right? And I start to think about what that looks like for us in the form of the, the development spiritually to be transformed in the renewing of our mind with God. Okay? Now, I know I'm stretching it here, but I want, I want you to come with me here on this, all right? I think a lot of us get to a point that we get settled in our ways, and we have, there's a life before God and after God. And usually the moment that I have accepted Jesus Christ is usually for us in spiritual development the most aggressive progression of spiritual development. And then it starts to wind, and it starts to go to just a stale movement, and we get relaxed, right? I don't know about you, but I've been there. Uh, when I became a Christian, uh, which was here, I loved it, I was on fire for God. My life changed dramatically because guess what? I truly believed that God came and sent his son to die on a cross for me. To a point that I even begged, why would God send his perfect and loving creation to die for somebody like me? Like the guilt was overwhelming. It was painful, and I didn't want it. I didn't want that guilt to be laid upon me. Because it wasn't fair. I knew from the very beginning as a child, a teenager growing up, what the impact my sins had. It caused a death. And that frightened me as a child. I didn't want that. But I sit back and as I developed, I understood that God's grace is so sufficient. That God's love is so amazing. That it, that it, was, it was bound to be the way that it was going to happen. Like if you read through the Old Testament, nothing else was working. God was giving it his effort, and we as humanity just didn't catch on. And this is how it had to be. That no way we can earn God's love, no way that any by any of our efforts could we be redeemed. It had to be through his son. Right? Now, 
been after. I was a different human being. My mind changed, my heart changed when I accepted Jesus Christ in my life. And in every avenue, whether it was perfect or not perfect, I started thinking about how God needed to be involved in that avenue of my life. And how I interacted with my mom, how I interacted with fellow students, how I interacted with my peers, my friends, my teachers, life. And I will tell you too, scripture became real to me at that point. Every time I started reading, it became something personal. And I was being transformed at every moment that I was absorbing it. And then as I got older, I stopped thinking about what it means on a daily basis basis of living this prayer out. Yes, I think this is a prayer. I think it's something that we need to revisit on a daily basis, a weekly basis, a yearly basis to go, where is my mind and is it in line with God's will? And we look at the world that we live in today, and it's easy to get distracted. It's easy to get something in our minds and our hearts that is not necessarily godly, but we have a tendency to associate it with God. And a lot of that is confusion, and a lot of it is because we have not spent time with God to recognize God. And a lot of voices and reason seeps in, and we combine the two. And it can be very, very unhealthy. Right? See, God wants to transform you. He does. He wants to be in your mind, of your mind, of your heart. He wants to be the heartbeat that dictates how you speak, how you act, how you react, how you love. Right? Think about that. I I was joking with somebody out here this morning that, man, the best kind of shopping I do now is online shopping. Do you know why? Because I don't have to go in and interact with people. And just saying that, shows a heart of an issue that I have, right? Like, I'm, I get easily frustrated sometimes. And you know what that is an example of? That I have not been allowing God to transform my life, my heart, and my mind to be in tune with him. Because you know what the, to be in tune with him is to love God and to love who? Others. His people. And guess what? Who's his people? All of us. Everyone created, everyone is created by God. One of the the coolest uh, Wednesday nights I've ever had as a youth pastor, I I was doing a sermon like this, and I had a teen up here, and she was painting. She was an artist, and we started with a blank canvas. And there was, I asked the students, what do you see? Nothing. It's a blank canvas. Right? And then as I was speaking and we were talking about transformation, we were talking about what God can create and what we allow God to create, she created a masterpiece on the stage that night. And it was of Jesus. You know, at least our thought of what Jesus looks like. And in less than like five minutes, she put it up, she got it done, and she was there. And this is what I was trying to explain to them. You see, God can take a blank canvas and turn it into art that can move a nation. The difference is between us and the canvas is we have to say yes. We have to allow our maker, our creator, to paint upon us his image. His wonderful and graceful image. But I want to talk about somebody that, that thought they were doing what God had called them to do. We're going to talk about Saul. And if you want to read about this, you can look at it at Acts 9. Uh, he's, he's better known as Paul, right? And he, he's written a lot of the New Testament, and he was a jerk. Uh, he was a murderer. Uh, he came after Christians with vengeance. 
He felt like that was the call of his life. And he was so wrapped up in it that he was not searching out God's will. He was leading by his own, his own desires, his own frustrations, his own world. And guess what? You had a a synagogue of others going, yes, we give you the full right to do this. Go and get them. And so he had a license to go out and hunt down Christians, arrest them if he could. If he had to kill them, he killed them. So Saul was the guy you stayed away from if you were a follower of the way. If Jesus was your Lord and Master, if Jesus was your Messiah, you knew who Saul was in this region. And guess what? If you heard that he was coming to your town, you hid. You didn't want to be around this dude. But I will tell you, he thought this call was from God. He thought he was doing God's work. And then he was on on the road to Damascus. And he gets hit by light. I've never been hit by light. I've been woken up by light. Not a fun, you come over the crest of driving straight into the light. That's not fun. Right? It's powerful. It's blinding. And it blinded him and knocked him on on his butt. It's powerful. And all of a sudden he hears the Lord's voice. And others around him heard what was going on. That'd be kind of intense. All of a sudden this light is speaking to you. Hey, I am your Lord. Why are you killing my people? Who are you? (laughs) Hold on. What? Why are you killing my people? In that moment became a realization of who he was talking to. Can you imagine if I talked about my wife in a way that I knew my wife but never hung out with my wife? Like I loved my wife, but I didn't spend any time with my wife. I would go out on dates, but just not with my wife, just by myself. And I would talk about that date. Man, my wife is a great time, but she wasn't there. Be kind of goofy, right? But you guys wouldn't know. You would only know because my wife would probably say, I don't know him. We're married, but I have no clue who he is. We don't hang out. We don't have a relationship. Can you imagine? Like, it would be weird. This is what was going on. And for the first time in Saul's life, he heard God's voice, and it called him, and he was shook. And he gets off the ground, and he's blind. And he calls him to a town to go see Ananias. Ananias is a nice guy. He's one of those, he's a, he's a believer in Jesus Christ. He wants to do God's work, but also he's like, I'm, I'm going to do God's work without, like, you know, fear of life. And he comes, and God has a conversation with Ananias and says, hey, you know who Saul is, right? Yeah. I need you to meet with Paul. I need Saul. I need you to love on him. What? Uh, that are you sure? I don't really want to do that. Can you find somebody else? That Peter guy. Good guy. He seems to be willing to do anything. No, I need you. Now hear that. Because I think there's a lot of you that are like that. That we do, hey, anybody else can do it but not me. We have Jay for a little while. And that's when I'm going to keep putting things on Jay until he leaves. (laughs) Yeah! (laughs) We do this with God. See, I think that, that there are things that God has created you personally to do and nobody else. 
I really believe that. Nobody else lives next to your neighbor except for you. Nobody else has your coworkers except for you. Nobody else has your family except for you. And you were called by God to bring Jesus to their life. To be the image bearer. But I think we have to be transforming in our mind and my, your heart. You cannot conform to this world where it's easy to point the fingers at everybody else. Look at the world. Watch news. We have news. I, growing up, I didn't feel like we had news br- like broadcasts just going at each other. We have news broadcasts just hating on each other. Who cares? We have a world that's pointing fingers at every avenue. And Christ comes in and says, I want you to be unified. I want you to bring peace. I want you to bring love. I want you to bring my salvation that's free to offer to anybody. And I want you to put feet to it. I want you to put hands to it. I want you to put a voice to it. I want you to be the embodiment of my love in the here and now. But I guarantee you cannot do that if your mind is not transformed by God. Like if your biggest worry, I'm telling you right now, and I'm not calling anybody out. Listen, I'm not. But if your biggest worry is if somebody's unvaccinated or vaccinated or masked or unmasked or the policies that are within that process, when you wake up, we've missed it. The biggest thing that we should worry about is somebody is saved or not. Whether somebody is growing with God or not. That should be our biggest worry when we wake up. It should be our biggest worry when we go to bed. We should be spending time with God in prayer. And and, and visiting God in prayer. And listening to God in prayer. How do you transform your mind and heart when you're always speaking and pleading and begging? It doesn't work. When you listen to God's word, guess what starts being hidden in your heart? God's word. Guess what starts to be squeezed out of your heart when you're squeezed by the world? God's word. Right? When coworkers talk behind your back, how do you respond? See, a transformed mind, a transformed heart doesn't get hurt by it, what's happening to them, but gets hurt for what's going on in that whole thing there. You see, when somebody talks bad about you, when, some, when you participate in it too, hell is brought upon those people. Do you realize that? When you run somebody's name through the dirt, Do you know what you're participating in? Hell. And it's a scary thing to be a part of. But when we allow our heart to be transformed by God, guess what we can only bring? His grace. His mercy. His love. Nowhere else. God is good like that. But he desires a church, not just an individual, a church to be thinking about how God can transform our minds and our hearts on a daily basis. That our biggest concern, yes, we have issues with buildings. We have issues with with tradition. We have issues with whether or not we need to expand or whether or not we, we do this ministry or that ministry, right? But the reality is, if God is within our heart and our mind, guess what we really need to be focused on? The ministry that he's put us in charge of. The community that we find ourselves in. Imagine if we had, yeah, we have difference of opinions just sitting within us in this sanctuary. And that's totally fine. That's how he's created us. We need to celebrate that. At the same time, the one thing that unifies us is God. Above all else. 
out of political stance, not, not the corner that we reside on. That doesn't reside us. God unifies us, right? And the moment that we seek God out, the moment that we believe God will, is the one that we come for, the one that we, we attend to on a daily basis, and again, and it's and it's a weird thing. I I think a lot of us get to a point that it's a have to instead of a want to. When it comes to relationship, which isn't good. Can you imagine giving your vows? I have to love you. I do because you make me. There's nothing romantic. There's nothing deep about that. I want to follow you. I want to love you. I want my life to reflect you. And I fail many times. Maybe even this morning you woke up and like everybody recognized, hey, don't talk to him this morning, all right? Our ride is really quiet. They did not wake up in a healthy atmosphere. Right or like me, you cheated in your in your dreams last night. Uh, I'm gonna hurt you. Right? Anybody? No, just my wife. Okay. <laughs> Maybe just once. We have to continue to allow God to move and be the one that transforms those areas. In, in Ezekiel. It says this, I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit in you and move to follow and move you to follow me, to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my law. Ezekiel's a prophet. And he's talking to God's people. That con- he, God continued to bring them out of exile. And they would celebrate God. Can you imagine like being slaves and being freed by God? And it being amazing. And it's a miracle that you're saved. And within like two months of being saved, you're, you're like, man, it was better to be a slave. This stinks. I don't have all the comforts that I really like. You know, being whipped. Serving idols. Because guess what? We become comfortable with that. You see, God is speaking to his people saying, listen, I want to remove your stone heart. I want you to have a heart that is of my flesh. Imagine waking up, having the sensitivity and grace and love God has for you and says, I need you in this world like that. You see, that's a transformed mind and heart. When I go to the store, I need to go with God's heart. When I go to to drive, I need God's heart. When I go to work, I need God's heart. When I'm dealing with relatives, I need God's heart. And guess what God's heart is? Always forgiving, always loving, always caring. It is kind. Do you remember what we talked about last week in 1 Corinthians 12? What is love? It is gentle. But all these things that we if we if we really follow what 1 Corinthians is saying, it transforms of who we are. And guess what we start to be recognized for? Not for our reputation of what we were. People will stand out and go, you're forgiving. What changed? You're kind. What changed? You're gentle. You're patient. What is going on? It's different. And all the praise goes towards God. I think a lot of us got transformed early on and now have become just a me. 
And we just sit there and flex our knee to sit down and take in. And, and almost, I don't know about you, I, I love football, I love watching football, and there's always Monday night, or what is it, uh, quarterbacking Monday night, which is you're talking about the game and going, this could have been better, and this could have been better, and this could have been better. We have a lot of that within our, in our walls. Not he, I don't know here, but we have a lot of it within the, the walls. We could be doing this better. And the reality is, we need to stop saying that and living that out. One of the things I've heard a senior pastor say that that's been transformative for me in ministry is when somebody said, hey, we could be doing this better. You need to be doing this better. He called them out. Well, guess what? God has given you a call in your life, apparently. And you've got a heart and passion for this ministry that we're not doing. And guess what? You're concerned. And I know why there's a concern, because God has put that concern in you, but we have put it on everybody else to do. Let's revisit Ananias, right? No, not me. I don't want to do that. This guy, he's a killer. And you expect me to be, first off, he's blind. Can you imagine you got blind Saul in your house? What are you going to do to him? Oh, sorry. Run him into all the counters? Whoops. How's those toes? Can you imagine that? Like, that would go through my mind. That's kind of demented, I know. My other demented part is, like, all the people that he has hurt. God, I want to hurt him. He deserves this. God says, no, I want you to love him. I'm going to use this guy. This guy's going to change so many lives because he's going to follow me. And Ananias says, okay, let's do this. And when he gets open, you know, he loves on Saul, the killer of Christians. And he loves on him. And then they send him to like training with other disciples. He clears his eyes. He's able to see again after a couple days. And he, he's ready to eat and he gets his strength back. And you're thinking, oh no. He's, he's back to being himself again. But he's amped up. And he goes and preaches in the synagogues. So the people that just told him to go out and, yeah, we give you full right to go and get these Christians. And guess what? He shows up in their synagogues preaching about Jesus Christ being their Messiah. Do you know the impact that had? And if Ananias said no, because his heart wasn't transformed, if he wasn't connected with God, if he wasn't being listening to God and said no, he's not welcome here. Where would we sit today? Scripture would probably look a little different. See, God is still writing the scripture in your heart to live out, to be transformative. We live in a world today that needs to see that transformative power. We live in a world that's very divisive and very set apart, and we need to be the ones that bring it back together. We need to be the voices of reason and peace. We need to be patient and kind. We need to be gentle and loving. If we live with a transformed heart, all those things come seeping out of us. So my question for you is this. Are you being transformed by God on a daily basis? And the way to tell is what's being coming out of your voice, out of your mouth, your actions. Are you loving? Are you kind? Are you gentle? Are you caring for somebody? Are you asking and seeking out God's will on a daily basis for you? And guess what? I, I will tell you, there are many times 
I recognize it with how I interact with my own family. I love my family. Um, I will go to the ends of the world for my family. They also seem to get the worst of Ben because they are required to love me back. When she did her bow, she said, I do, always, even when you're a jerk. But the people that I, I love the most, that would be easy, I will, I'll be honest, would be easy to lay my life down for them. Sometimes I treat them the worst. And I don't think I'm alone on that. I think strangers can easily become victims of judgment without even thinking about it. But the moment that I'm in entwined with God on a daily basis, I will tell you, there have been moments that I wake up, me and my wife are not on the same page, and we go at it, and I read scripture that morning, I get convicted, and I can't help but call her, text her, let her know, God loves you, and I love you, and I'm sorry, whether I'm right or wrong, I love you, and we can move past it. And whatever was there, it doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of eternity. And the same needs to be true between each other, between a stranger and us. One of the things that I came to a realization is we, we understand that the, the, the canvas of our life is painted by Jesus Christ. And so the mess that was there, all you can see is Jesus now. Right? He took that mess that was Ben Alexander and says, I love that mess. And in that mess, I'm creating something new and amazing. And he's going to be transformed. And in that mess, you will see my love. I praise God for that. In my mess, you see God's love. When we see other messes and they don't have that hope of Jesus, they live in that mess, and they're defined by that mess. And we look at that canvas and judge it. And we forgot who's creating that canvas. Who wants to be a part of that canvas? Who needs to be the painter of that canvas? To clean it. To love it. To make it new. And guess what? We are called to be the ones that point back to the original artist. My question for you is, are you being transformed by God? Is your heart sensitive to who God is and what God wants of you? That's a question. I want you to leave with that this morning. Next week, I implore you to be here. I, 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 I pray that you rearrange your schedule. If you, if you have a vacation, I understand. I get it if you have other plans. And why I'm saying this is because we're having a moment where we're going to baptize one of ours. All right? All right? That's awesome. Mason is getting baptized. And I sat down with him, and it has been awesome to hear God, how God is transforming his life. And how he's on fire for God and wants God to move in his life. And as, as an, a symbol of that, he wants everybody to know my life has been changed because of what Jesus Christ did for me. And as a family, we come together and we celebrate that. That's an awesome thing. So we're going to talk about that next week, too. And if anybody else feels like, hey, I want to be baptized, come and talk to me. All right? I want to celebrate that. It's always an opportunity to be baptized. Okay? I will never turn anybody down. So, come back next week. This week, this is what I'm asking for you to think about. Is your life been transformed by God, and what does it show being transformed by God? All right? Stand with me. Let's pray. Dear Holy Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for the scripture that points to you of redemption, salvation, new beginning. Lord, I pray 
that our minds are transformed by you. I pray that we are connected to you in a way that the world sees it, hears it, knows it. That we wake up ready to celebrate you. That even though I had a bad day, I can still be on fire for you because I know my Savior. Even though I'm overwhelmed by this world, I know who created this world. Lord, may our hope be found in you and nothing else. Lord, I pray that we have family members that need you, and I pray that we pray about them, that we love on them, that we show them the the kindness and gentleness and patience that you show us. I pray we do the same thing at work. Transform how we see people to how you see them. Teach us, mold us to love the way that you've called us to love. Lord, may we be the church this week that follows you. May we be the church that's transforming. May we be the church that our minds and our hearts are in tune with you. May we impact the community because you've moved in our hearts. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. I pray that we're moving in the way that you've called us to move. Amen. You're dismissed.